Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, Britney fan. Look at my t-shirt. Today, we're gonna to be talking about, I think, one of the more interesting sunscreen launches of 2023. I got a DM about this very early on this year. Someone from Italy sent me a screenshot. They're like, you need to get this as soon as possible. I had reviewed the original version of the sunscreen last year. And while I think it's decent for oily skin, all things considered, I'll get to that in a second. A lot of people with oily skin were like, this is still greasy, this is still heavy, this is not matte, this is not what I want. La Roche Pose listened and with that, they brought you not just one, but two launches of their UV Immune 400 sunscreens for oily skin. We got their Anthelios UV Immune 400 Oil Control Fluid, and then we got their Anthelios UV Immune 400 Oil Control Gel Creme. The tea on these is that these are European only options, obviously, because of all the filters in these. That UV Immune filter, that Mexico 400 filter, is another L'Oreal patented UV filter that really extends into that long wavelength UVA range. And based off where you are, you might be able to get one or both. I don't know. Uh, when it first launched initially the gel cream was available here in like mainland europe and the fluid was only available in the uk here in germany now i can see both of them at the drugstores also i think i've seen tinted versions of i think the fluid so that also might exist as well so super interesting i have reviewed these on my tiktok and instagram if you don't follow me there it's at glow by ramon but let's talk about these for youtube so obviously the see behind these is that they're basically more mattifying versions of the original ev immune 400 sunscreens which i personally didn't mind again but people thought those were shiny. So L'Oreal so Pose. So La Roche Pose gave more mattifying options. Reading some of the claims behind these, I'll read first the claims for the fluid. It's a daily facial SPF 50 that's suitable for oily skin types, including skin prone to blemishes, sensitivity, and sun intolerance. Formulated with our revolutionary UV filter, UV Mean 400, the most efficient UV filter for protection against ultra long UVA. Our lightweight invisible formula protects against UVA and UVB rays and melts into the skin for protection with no white marks. The key benefits, and basically this applies to both of these, it's invisible, weightless, this one's a fluid texture, this one's a gel cream, SPF 50 plus, up to 12 hours mattifying effects, 92% agree skin looks less oily, that it helps to absorb sebum and reduce the appearance of pores, it's sweat resistant, and it's also suitable for acne prone skin. I think the language I saw for both of these say that they are actually extra water resistant or extra sweat resistant, ultra sweat resistant, which means up to 80 minutes if you're using the US terminology behind it. So I don't know why it only says just regular water resistant. I think I should say ultra or extra water resistant. And considering these are both chemical sunscreens, I'll be using my 6F testing rubric where I break down the feel, finish, filters, formulation, foundation wear, and fragrance for each of these. I'll have timestamps for both sunscreens down below in the description box. That way you can slide over to whatever part you want to see specifically. And let's get into it starting with the fluid. So with all my sunscreens that I review, I always apply the amount of sunscreen based off how big my face is. I've measured my face. If you want to know how much sunscreen you're supposed to wear based off your face size, I have a card up here. So I do weigh it out using my little scale at my little quarter teaspoon. And when I did this on Instagram and TikTok originally, everyone was like, you're wearing way too much of this. You're wearing way too much. So I specifically meant to make sure I was wearing the correct amount for my face for YouTube. So I did weigh it out. So you can see in the application footage for this, I take some and I apply it. And what's nice about this is that it does have that very signature milky texture we have with the invisible fluids. Just make sure before you use this, Make sure you do shake these up, but you can see I take some and put it on my face and it's like dripping down. It's a very light milky texture. It blends in and works in fairly easily, all things considered. The feel of it is, I mean, it's still very similar to, in my mind to the original Evie Mean 400. Lightweight, but there's still some body to it. I feel like whenever I work it into my face, it feels like it gets just a tad bit thicker. The finish of it. And for this, I believe I did side by sides before and after filming. And that way you could see the impact of the sunscreen on my face right after application. I don't think this is matte. And I, that was a big reason why everyone on Instagram and TikTok were like, you're putting on way too much. That's why it's not matte for you. Cause I was like, I'm kind of disappointed in this. It's not matte like I thought it would and like it advertises. And so that's why you can see here in the footage, I try to like make it as clear as possible, be as transparent as possible. Yes, I have studio lighting and it does make things look a little bit more bright, more radiant than normal. But even, I mean, I've worn this now for months. It just never looks matte for me with nothing underneath it, with only a couple of things underneath it. It just never gets 
gets met. That's the tea behind the fill and the finish. It's still lightweight. Honestly, I think it's similar to the original Evie Mean 400 sunscreen. It's just not matte. And while this did work in easy though, I don't know if you can tell, there is a little bit of a whiteness to the formula, most likely due to the silica and everything. That makes me wonder with deeper skin tones, how is this gonna work? Another content creator, which is someone you need to be following. Her name is Tamano Abi. She's Dutch. She's reviewed this. She's also a really great sunscreen reviewer and I refer to her content a lot. I'll have her video linked below, but she has reviewed both of these already. I believe on her, this didn't leave a white cast though. So that's worth noting. In terms of the filters though, so obviously it's a chemical sunscreen, as I mentioned. The fluid features, Tinosorb S, Octosalate, Evenol T150, Able Benzone, Mixoral 400, Evenol A+, Mixoral XL, and Mixoral SX. So those Mixorals are the L'Oreal patented UV filters. And then you have Tinosorb S for some broad spectrum action. You have some UVB and UVA boosting. So you're getting really good photo protection. The T behind the Anthelios Invisible Fluid Sunscreens is that you have ultra high SPF. I mean, they don't disclose it like the Korean brands do. So you just know it's above SPF 50. And then also ultra high UVA PF ratings. And the thing is, I learned at work that when La Roche Posay was originally launching these or part of a big thing with the original, original, original Invisible Fluids was there was a trend here in Europe to get equivalent UVA protection to UVB protection. So oh, not one to one exactly, but as close as possible. And so that's why you see sunscreens like this where the SPF is 50 plus and the UVA PF is high 40s, low 50s. Someone commented in one of my last videos what this was supposed to be. I can't remember. I think it's UVA PF of 54. I'm pulling that out of nowhere. Someone probably already knows from Reddit or asking the brand itself. If you know the actual number, can you please comment it and I'll pin it or something. So yeah, ultra high UVA PF as well. I think that's why they really advertise this for being for individuals who have intense sun sensitivities just because you're really boosting that photo protection all across the spectrum, especially with that Mixora 400 filter that helps to boost in that part of the UVA spectrum that some sunscreens tend to start dipping down on. You're really ensuring some nice protection in that area. The only other brand I've really seen kind of attempt something close is Aven with their triasorb, but that filter is, it presents some inelegance, you know? In terms of formulation points, so what's nice about these is that there's a little something to them. So this features zinc PCA, although it's really low, it's like the last ingredient on the ingredients list. Vitamin E, glycerin. This features silica and silica silylates, which are obviously silicas. They help to, in some capacity, aid with mattifying. They're supposed to anyways. And there's also an ingredient here called Bixa Oriana Seed Extract. It's, I looked it up and it, it's an active offered by BASF. And I'll have here on the screen some of the claims the manufacturer makes. So basically it's supposed to aid in sebum regulation, sebum related things. But I think that's what's helping to make the 12 hour mattifying claims that this does claim. Does that really happen? Honestly, it hasn't for me, but here's some evidence if you want that. It's also known as, if you're Boricua, you know this, achiote, which I mean, I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, sazon con achiote, because sazon is like this seasoning that we use in Puerto Rico and Latin America. And the achiote version has a very distinct Distinct, like orange red color and so like we season everything with that stuff so that was interesting to see and then this does have alcohol and it does have fragrance in there the alcohol obviously helps it to have a very elegant texture and it, it smells like alcohol i'm not gonna lie to you it does smell like alcohol and the fragrance to me is not overpowering in terms of ice stinging though i will say usually i don't have an issue with ice stinging especially a formula like this it's ultra water and set resistant these are the kind of sunscreens that they set down pretty well and pretty easily and therefore the migration risk is very low but i had some irritation around my eye area with this one partially because my skin was compromised i don't know if i want to blame the formula entirely but yeah obviously with any sunscreen review i will say for me it gives minimal to no eye irritation risk and i'll have people in the comments being like this sunscreen blinded me so i can't speak for everyone i personally didn't have a huge in my eye burn but because my skin was a little bit compromised around my orbital area it was spicy in terms of foundation wear though i found this was pretty elegant it prepped my skin nicely for makeup there's a little bit of i mean it's, it's a moisturizing texture to me that's why it kind of reminds me of the original uv mune it's not matte there's a little little bit of a slight emollients to it. So I think it preps the skin nicely for makeup. I had no weird pilling issues. I don't think it made my makeup extra, extra shiny, like more shinier than normal. But I think for all things considered, this is a nice base for makeup because it is a very lightweight, milky texture overall. So that was a success. And then in terms of fragrance, it smells like alcohol, but once that smell dissipates, it just smells like fresh European skincare. You know, the French pharmacy brands, they love themselves a little perfume up in there. So just do note that. And I don't think it's a very subtle scent either. I'm going to be very honest. It's kind of pronounced, but I think it's better than like the Vichy or SVR smells. So yeah, with the fluid, uh, disappointed overall. To me, this doesn't present much of a difference that warrants having a different formula from the original UV Immune fluid. So that was definitely a, mm. but I mean, I've had people comment on the Instagram and TikTok saying that for them, it was mattifying. You look at the footage, you let me know.
know I have very oily acne prone skin and I'm not matte upon initial application and hours later I stay not matte. So do with that information what you will. Let's get on to the gel cream. This was actually the first one I bought. And for this one, it's obviously a gel cream texture compared to the fluid. This actually like it has body, like it's not going nowhere. It's definitely, she's thick. Very similar claims to this. I actually have to pull this off the French website because the UK website, although it advertises UV mean 400 and everything, the ingredients and the claims I think are still the old mattifying gel cream, which I'll have the video linked up here. Like three years ago, I reviewed the gel cream from the original line that I think featured not only like a really high amount of silica, but also a really high amount of titanium dioxide. White cast, even on me, white cast. Very inelegant, very chalky, horrible to blend in. So I'll, if you want to see that review, it's up here. But very similar benefits, high protection SPF 50 plus, anti-shine, protects very high amounts across the entire UV spectrum, extra water resistance, non-comedogenic. This one specifically is without fragrance, apparently. I lost the box for this, so I can't confirm with the box, but according to the French La Roche-Posay website with the accurate ingredients list. This does not have fragrance in there. Worth noting. So getting into the application for this one, you can see obviously it's a gel cream. Applying it on, compared to the fluid, this one does take a little bit more elbow grease to like really work it in. It's not super ultra light, like smooth creamy. Like it does require a little bit of work, but it blends in fairly easily. Like it's not leaving a really chalky white cast on me or anything. And so that's nice to note. But that being said, I wonder again with deep skin, how is that going to translate? And then in terms of my facial hair and everything for this one, I think it works in pretty easily. I don't have to do too much. I do have to double check just to make sure it's like blended in along the edges, but overall it's good. The finish of this. So while the feel of it, it's a gel cream. I think it's a little bit more moisturizing compared to the fluid. The finish of this is actually a little bit more matte to me. In my mind, I'm not entirely sure what is responsible for that effect, but I think I prefer the finish to this one. To me, this actually gets closer to a semi-natural finish. The matte is nowhere in the room with us. And so that's for me a little bit of a plus, but it is a little bit of, I think a richer texture on the skin, but I think the fluid is more emollient. That might just be me though. I don't know. If you've tried this, if you try both of them, let me know what your thoughts are. Filters, the same filters, just different order. Octosalate, Tinosorb S, Uvenol T150, Avobenzo, Mixoro 400, Uvenol A+, Mixoro XL, Mixoro SX. Just scramble it up, same filters in this. The formulation, also pretty much the same thing. Zinc PCA, vitamin E, glycerin, silica. You have the Bix Active extract. You do have alcohol on this though, but no fragrance as I mentioned earlier. That being said, this has a subtle alcohol scent to it, but nothing crazy. Foundation wear, I think I prefer this one underneath foundation just because again, I think it is a little bit more matte and I've only used this in the colder months here in Germany. So having a more moisturizing texture to my makeup just works a little bit better and it's not gonna be crazy emollient, crazy shiny. So it's a little bit more on that natural to somewhat matte finish. Therefore, it keeps me looking a little bit more fresh throughout the day before I get really, really oily. And I haven't had pilling issues with this either. I think in terms of this or the fluid, I've seen more people comment about pilling issues with this one. I can't relate. And then a fragrance, again, this does have alcohol that smell dissipates really quickly though. And there is an underlying smell. I'm trying to figure out if that's like raw material. It kind of smells a little bit industrial plasticky. Very interesting, but I don't know what that smell is exactly, but it's not perfumed like the fluid one is. So between the two of these, honestly, it was an exciting launch. I was very hyped for it. I was ultimately really disappointed though. Realistically, if I would recommend one of these, I think the gel cream is my actual favorite option just because it is the more mattifying option. I'll be interested to see how the fluid compares right now just because summer's around the corner. I'll be vacationing in a very hot climate very soon. And fundamentally, I think the lighter texture is going to be more preferred, but it's just not matte. In which case, I probably should do a side-by-side -side wear test, a review of this with the original UV immune fluid just to see if this one is matte, how much more matte is. But looking at the claims, this is not matte. It doesn't keep me matte for 12 hours. It might do a little something, something for like pores and textures as it claims it does in that regard. But realistically, this isn't something I would run and grab if you're looking for a matte sunscreen. I think Eucerin really hits that out of the park. The only thing that this has on top of the Eucerin is just the fact that it has a little bit of that boost in the UVA part of the spectrum, but Eucerin has alcohol, this has alcohol. I don't remember if Eucerin has fragrance, but this one has fragrance. Eucerin is a much lighter texture. It's more elegant, it sets down matte, it keeps you matte, and I think at least here in Germany, I think Eucerin's a little bit cheaper. In the UK, it is for sure. So overall, in my mind, if you want a European sunscreen that is actually going to be matte, but offer really good protection, that is water and sweat resistant, the Eucerin Oil Control, the European version, is the one you want to get. So yeah, let me know down below in the comments section. Have you tried these Oil Control UV Immune sunscreens? What are your thoughts on them? Are they the same as mine? Are they different from mine? And if, if they were actually matte for you, can you please tell me how you use them and what you use them with? Because again, I use them with skincare underneath, everything from just a layer of like an essence, a couple hydrators, nothing. And to me, it was just never matte. And I have very oily 
skin. So I just have to wonder what, what was the issue? What was wrong? Because the claims were not claiming and the sunscreens, they weren't doing it for me. So I wanna know if it worked for you, what you did. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and Fenty related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.